Hi folks, Glyn Dewis here with episode 73. Now this week, because of time constraints, I've got a really, really quick tutorial for you. In fact, this, for the record, might actually be the quickest one I've actually done so far. Now just so you know that if you're obviously following me here on YouTube, other places you can see what I'm up to is over on Twitter, where I've got the username of at Glyn Dewis, and it's the same handle that I use, Glyn Dewis, over on Facebook, uh, Pinterest, Instagram, and Google+. So if you're not there, it'd be great to see if you can uh, uh, hook up on those channels as well. Now, if we dive over, here's the picture that we actually used last week when I showed you how you can actually combine the sky and the ground to make a completely new background. This week, because of a couple of questions I had since posting this video, I want to show you how I created that depth of field by adding some blur. All right, so let's dive over to the picture when it's kind of part way through the retouching where we've got some of the layers here over on the right hand side that go to make the picture up. Now, if I click on the bottom layer here, this is the layer that contains the grass and the sky and the distant tree that we worked on last week. And you can see when I turn that off, you can see that the lion, uh, sorry, the lioness, the tree and the shadowing is all above on top of that layer here. So what I wanna do is make it look as if the actual background way beyond the actual line there is, is all kind of like soft and out of focus so we can really exaggerate that depth of field. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the landscape layer. Now I'm gonna use a blur and because that's a filter, I'm gonna go to the filter menu and choose convert for smart filters. And once it's done that, I'm just gonna get my rectangular marquee tool and drag out a selection from the top right, bring it down below the horizon line, just a little bit further down, so it's gonna kind of look as if it is just on the other side of the lioness. And like I said, the great thing is, because the lioness and the actual tree are above this, that's not gonna get, they're not gonna get blurred. It's only gonna be that part of the grass, the sky, and the distant mountains and what have you. So we're gonna to go to uh, filter, blur, and we'll just try Gaussian blur. And we can dial in the amount we want here. Yeah, around about 10 is looking good. We can see now the tree, the mountains, and whatever, they've all kind of blurred out nicely. And we'll click OK. So that's kind of looking good until we zoom in. Because if we look at the very bottom here, we've got the blur where it meets the rest of the grass that's now in focus. Rather than it blending in, we can see there's a very, very defined line. And that's obviously not what we want. So let's just get rid of that by going back a couple of steps like so. So now we don't have any blur. And then we're gonna drag out a selection again. We're on that background layer. Let's drag it out, encompassing the sky, that horizon line, and just a little bit now on the other side of that lioness. Now when we draw out a selection, you have the choice here of either adding in that feather as you're drawing it, or you can actually come to the select menu, choose modify, and then choose feather. But the thing is, how much feathering do you apply? It's very much a guessing game. And even with experience, you know, with different size pictures, you might have to reapply it, try it again, then reapply it to get it right. Now it's obviously time consuming. So I wanna show you a very quick way that I use to actually see exactly how much I need to blend, sorry, how much feathering I need to do to blend that actual selection in. And the way we do that is, when we've drawn out our selection, I just press Q on my keyboard or click on the icon at the bottom of the toolbar to go into quick mask. So now we can see the area that was actually enclosed within that selection, this red overlay here showing that I've selected the sky, the horizon line, and just a little bit of the grass. And then instead of actually going to feather, I'm gonna to go to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. And I can just dial in now the amount that I want to kind of help that really, really distinct straight red line here blend in nice and softly. And I found that around about 110 on this picture look pretty good. And you can see now when I zoom in, rather than before having a very straight line, we've now got a very soft blended in kind of area. And that's exactly as a, the same effect as if we'd applied feathering to that same amount. So what I'm gonna do now is just click OK. I shall come out of quick mask mode by pressing Q or clicking on the icon over on the left hand side. And then I can come in and go filter, blur, Gaussian blur and dialing in, I think we used 10 pixel radius last time, clicking okay. And now when we zoom in, 
unlike before when we had that very, very defined line between the blur and the grass, now we can see that we've got the blur and it just gets less and less and less and then eventually we start to see grass that's becoming in focus. So we've actually managed to get it to blend in to the perfect amount. That's just a very, very quick way that I use Quick Mask to kind of visually see what my feathering should be rather than just playing a guessing game. And that is all there is to it. See, I told you it's a quick one, but listen, before I go, just a couple of requests. The first one, if you haven't already, make sure you click on that subscribe button. So then you'll get to know that uh, when there's other new free videos that have been released. And the other one is just to let other people know about this channel. You know, there's a lot of work goes into doing this. I love posting these videos out for you. And it's great to get the feedback to know that they've been really, really helpful. So I've got a bit of a goal at the minute that we try to get the channel to 100,000 subscribers. And I think at recording time now, we're around about 83,000 but the only way it's going to grow is with your help so please just spread the word let other people know about this channel and hey I'll see you back here next week